Welcome to our YouTube video series on business law. My name is Christopher Neufeld of Neufeld Legal. And in this particular series, we are looking at the unanimous shareholders agreement. In this particular video, the importance of the unanimous shareholders agreement. Now, why is the unanimous shareholders agreement so important? The unanimous shareholders agreement is probably one of the most pivotal business documents where an individual goes into business with one or more other individuals. Because not only does it set the structure through which the business will be operated and managed, but it will also assist in addressing any disputes that may arise and any changes that might well come about during the course of the business. Now, before we go into specific details of unanimous shareholders agreements, there's two important considerations that one has to understand. First and foremost, the courts have largely left the operations of businesses up to the individuals who engage in business with one another. They do provide certain remedies, often known as oppression remedies, to protect minority shareholders from the harsh actions of majority shareholders. And they also have both common law and to some degree in the statutes, protections against fraudulent or inappropriate activity that's undertaken by certain shareholders against other shareholders. Nevertheless, the court process is a laborious process that is not only expensive, but extremely time consuming. And it is not really designed for assisting a business that is an ongoing enterprise and that has to focus on its commercial activities. As such, no business owner or shareholder in a business really wants to see the business taken out of its routine to the degree that a court proceeding would take a business out of its routine. And as such, you really need to be looking and considering using a shareholders agreement to manage and operate the business activities and resolve disputes that come about. The second important factor with the unanimous shareholders agreement is that these shareholders agreements are not necessarily covering every single topic. However, since they do cover some of the more significant events and they act like a bludgeon or a baseball bat should people get out of hand, they're an effective tool to force people to the table to negotiate. Because if you don't have a means to get your fellow shareholders to negotiate with you and find a common sense resolution, they are simply going to continue to either take advantage of you or not address the problems that are arising in the business or the problems that they're creating by their own actions. It is for that very reason that having a shareholders agreement and having the knowledge that there is a shareholders agreement sitting out there that can smack the other parties around that will get them hopefully to the negotiating table and to get them to negotiate in good faith. Nevertheless, you have to take the initiative with it and taking the initiative starts with taking the initiative in creating a unanimous shareholders agreement that reflects the intentions of the business where the business is aiming to go, what the individual shareholders are looking to bring to the business, and what considerations need to be thought of when the business runs into problems, into disputes, and needs the purpose of exit strategies. Without, not without, but for this very reason, Unanimous shareholders agreements have many functions and because of the multiplicity of functions that they hold, 
they can seem cumbersome, burdensome, and just overall challenging to understand, let alone to read and properly comprehend. For this particular reason, it's always strongly recommended that you engage legal counsel to assist you, and specifically you. Not your other shareholders, not the company, but you in understanding what is entails the unanimous shareholders agreement. What rights are you being given? What rights are you not receiving? What are the benefits of certain clauses? And what are the negative elements of certain clauses? There's a lot that goes into shareholders agreements, a lot that can be clarified very easily by a lawyer who has experience in it. But since there is also so much there, oftentimes it is very easy to miss stuff that is purposely removed or simply was never considered. There's many opportunities to make a unanimous shareholders agreement that much better, especially when one considers that most of the agreements that are presented to business people are generic templates. They're simply off-the-shelf versions that could typically fit a lot of businesses, but they're not tailored to your specific business. They're not tailored to specific personalities that are involved to the contributions that each person is going to be making to the business, to the fact there are multiple shareholders, not just two shareholders sometimes, and sometimes they're not, there isn't a 50-50 split, or there is an alteration over time. Because of all these dynamics, the shareholders agreement needs to be designed to meet those dynamic elements. Because if it is meeting those dynamic elements and it is meeting the business plan that the shareholders conceive for their particular business, it will serve as a very important tool in motivating and advancing that business plan and dealing with any issues that arise. And as I said, it might not deal specifically with the issues that come up, but it has that bludgeoning ability to put people back in line or to actually deal with the situation if things are going bad. Because that's one of the key problems associated with not having a shareholders agreement or not having an appropriate shareholders agreement is when there is a dispute that just gets too intense and too problematic and the shareholders can no longer operate with one another. Where is the business to go from there? How does it move forward? Nobody wants to be told what to do so they need to look to something that will tell them that they already agree to be told what to do and that is where the shareholders agreement comes in place. It forces people to capitulate, to come to the table, to attempt to negotiate. And if they're not negotiating in good faith or to the satisfaction of the other parties, the other parties can simply look to the harsh language that is typically contained in the shareholders agreement and force a resolution. It may be hard on the other shareholders when they force that resolution, but at least the situation is resolved. And that is what is ultimately desired. You need resolution because only with resolution can you move forward and that is what a unanimous shareholders agreement provides. We'll look to address other aspects of unanimous shareholders agreements in future YouTube videos. However, you have to remember the agreement of itself is the most important aspect. A solid agreement that protects your interests and that you have had independent legal advice provided to yourself to ensure that your rights and your interests are properly protected in advance is a critical element 
So you're accepting a unanimous shareholders agreement, signing off on it, and working with it as you drive your business to success and you enjoy your fair share in that business's success. And that is why the unanimous shareholders agreement is so important to a business person like yourself. We hope you've enjoyed this YouTube video, found it informative. Naturally, there's a lot more information you need with respect to unanimous shareholders agreements, but we hope this is a good start. And we also would very much appreciate if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel, as it is through that means that we are able to very much expand the reach of our YouTube channel and get other business owners like yourself, other shareholders, to properly protect their interests as they move forward and advance their own business enterprise. We hope you all the best in your business ventures and look forward to talking to you again through YouTube and other mediums in the future. Thank you.